Somebody fasten your seatbelt because we are changing the altitude. Hallelujah. Tell somebody with all respect, it is still dominion hour where we normally don't sit. So thank God you are sitting for a while. But in a moment, everything is going to go wild. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. This morning we have in the house a servant of God. One of the precious sons of the archbishop. A man with a prophetic ministry, deliverance ministry. A man whose ministry is crowned with miracles. Travel the world by the grace of God. Come, but loaded. All the way from Nigeria, from the liberation city in Lagos. Let's make welcome and let's receive the ministry of Dr. Chris Okafor. Put your hands together for the seven. Somebody shout hallelujah. You can do better than that. Come on now. There are many days in the life of every one, but there are days you don't forget in a hurry. Today, you will not forget in a hurry. If your amen is loudest, it will happen for you. Let me hear an amen like thunder in the house. Yeah. Hallelujah. Are you glad to be here? Yeah. I am happy to be here. I want to thank my father, our father. Yeah. Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams. You know, Celebrate him, come on now. You know, you know, your biological father can determine where you are coming from, but your spiritual father determines where you are going to. Your father is your feather. And I can tell you that I have a father, and with his feather, God has helped, helped us. We are flying. Amen. Before, I was standing, but now, 
I am flying. I used to stand and work before, but came in contact with my father in the Lord, our father, the father of this house. I began to fly. And I tell you that my life has been trans transformed ministry-wise on every side. Let's celebrate our father one more time. And all the great servants of God in the house, Bishop Obodah, Obodah, put your hands together for me. And everyone here. Without wasting time, I know you came here to encounter God. I want to let you know that the God of action is in action this morning. Yeah. Lift up your right hand. Say, I will not return back the same way I came. I am living here. No need to show. Open your mouth and talk to God. Open your mouth. I am living here this morning with a testimony to show. Open your mouth. Shout Alabada. In Jesus' mighty name. Are you ready to pray this morning? Now understand, prayer, prayer has power. And this morning, things will happen in your life. Um, I want to quickly show you something that we'll pray. Uh, come with me, Second Kings chapter number 4. Second Kings chapter number 4. Second Kings chapter number 4. Um, you know, sometimes we go through different battles in life. That we cannot explain but majority of the battles that we go through is as a result of ignorance and that's why the bible said my people perish because they lack knowledge and one of the battles we are going to be dealing with this morning is the inherited battles inherited battles amen somebody you know a lot of us are ignorant of how inherited battles And they said, and leave thou and thy children of the rest. Father, bless the reading of your word. Let me hear somebody say big amen. Yeah. You know, something is interesting here. 
I want you to look at this. The Bible said, before the prophet died, he went to borrow money. And the situation of the prophet was so bad that before he died, he had no money, neither does he have properties to use as collateral. Sit down for a moment. Neither does he have property to use as collateral. On that day, to the money lenders, they had, he had to money. How did I know? The Bible said when the prophet died just after the burial the creditors came to take the two sons. Now if the two sons were aware that their father had used them as collateral, probably they would run away. They would run away. They were not aware they were not there when their father entered into the deal. They were ignorant of the things that have happened but then for the fact that they are ignorant doesn't mean that the creditor will not come after them. I don't know the battle you have inherited. I don't know the creditor that is coming against you, spiritually or otherwise. But after this morning, the battle will turn. I can't hear your amen. I said the battle will turn. If you believe in shout yes. Hallelujah. Be seated. Now, something is important here. You know, when you talk about deliverance, deliverance is not about falling down and breaking chair. Deliverance is beyond that. Amen, somebody? I've seen people, they fall down and break chair and, and they are not delivered. You don't get The church will not pay for the chair. Amen, somebody? Now, I discovered something here. These people were in serious bondage, but when they came to Elisha, Elisha didn't ask the woman to pray because there are things prayer deals with and there are things prayers don't deal with. It takes instruction to eliminate destruction. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now their father was no more. Just like many of us here, we don't know the things our fathers or our forefathers got involved into. But we are victims. Lamentation chapter 5 verse 7. It says, our fathers have seen, they are no more, but we bore the iniquities of our fathers. What does it mean to bear the iniquities of our fathers? Sometimes what we become in life, we don't decide it. It is decided by the things that have happened in the past, by the reason of our father's house or our mother's house. Are you hearing what? Some of you through a certain it's not because into that Jesus said it there are some of battle sounds people people don't pro Anybody who try to rise the way for is, a, is an inherited battle. But somebody can change the battle. Somebody can change the battle. May you be the one to change the battle. May you be the one to change the battle. I said, may you be the one to change the battle. Now, hear me. Our fathers have seen they are no more. They have done a lot of things. When we look at some kind of inherited battles, these, are, these things are very deep. It doesn't matter... You see, covenant does not matter, does not know how many years you have been a Christian. This man was a prophet, a prophet. But he died a creditor. He was a And the reason why, the reason is this, that the people were ignorant. Look at what solved his problem was something that is around him. And many of us, it's not because God is not answering our prayers. It's because we are ignorant. 
And ignorant is the license to bondage. Ignorant is the license to bondage. That's why the Bible says where there is no vision, the people perish. And they said in the multitude of many counsel that there might be safety. But I discovered there are people, even though when the vision has come, they still decide to perish. Your case will not be the same. I can't hear your amen. I say your case will not be the same. Now, check this. The man have died. He's no man. And the children, we are not aware of the deal their father entered into. Now, whether you like it or not, whether you know about it or not, it's a covenant, and covenant is very powerful. Covenant is an agreement between two or more persons. For example, in Exodus chapter 20, God began to give instruction to Moses. From verse 1 to 6, he said, You shall not make for yourself any graven image of anything in heaven or on the earth or beneath it. He said, For I, the Lord your God, I'm a jealous God, visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. What does, it, what does that mean? Our fathers have done something, we will, suffer, we will suffer for it. It doesn't matter who we are or what we do. Until we have understanding to deal with these issues, to deal with foundational or resolved issues, it becomes a very big problem to come out of it. But tonight, by the God of this, by the God of our Father, you are coming out from the battle. I can hear your amen. Be seated, be seated. Get ready, get ready for prayers. And now, the man was dead. The man, the man ordered the dead and the children will suffer as a result of what he has done. What is it that happened in your family, your forefathers, your grandfathers, your mother's side, your father's side, that you have inherited? Amen, somebody. Your mother suffered a kind of thing, you are suffering the same thing. Your father suffered a kind of thing, you are suffering the same thing. It doesn't matter how it came, but if somebody can start it, somebody can also end it. The Bible said, through one man sin and death came, but through another man, righteousness and life came in. I prophesy today, every battle from your father's house, from your mother's house, that is thrilling you, after this service, you will come out of it. Be seated, be seated, be seated. What is deliverance? What is deliverance? Now, this woman ran to prophet Elisha and said, man of God, the creditors have come to take my two sons to be born men. What does it mean? It means the situation will become worse and our lineage will be closed. And she was expecting Elisha to pray for her. And Elisha looked at the woman prophetically. You got to know that what is the one who enters into the water first that is made whole. Even if you enter a minute later, nothing will happen. So you need to be time sensitive of how the Spirit of God operates and what He wants to do at a particular time so that you can move to your next level. You can know the time of your deliverance. And I know somebody's time is now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Sit down. Let's finish this. Let's finish this. And then the woman said, man of God, please, I need your prayers. The creditors have come to take my two sons to become born men. And Elisha looked at the woman. Elisha said, madam, your problem does not need prayer. He didn't pray. I was surprised. Did you see that? The man of God didn't even pray for one second. Because he needs to understand what is going on. This is the reason why some people pray and pray and they don't get results. And the prophet said, this is the problem. You don't need prayers. The prophet said, what do you have in your house? Because what you needed for your deliverance today, God gave you yesterday. What you needed for your deliverance today, God gave yesterday. And because we don't have understanding of these things, it seems the devil is having upper hand over us. That's why the Bible says we are not ignorant of the devices of the enemy. What are his devices? Our inability to understand what God wants us to do. Now hear this. The prophet said, woman, what do you have in your house? And the woman said, man of God, of a truth, 
Your handmaid have nothing except a little pot of oil. Is it in your Bible? Huh? A little bottle of oil. What does that tell me? It tells me that when the man of God was alive, the oil was more. But the man of God kept on eating his oil. There are people who are eating their deliverance. There are people who are driving their deliverance as cars. There are people who are eating their family deliverance in the, with their mouth. If the oil was small after the death of the prophet, that means the oil was more when the prophet was alive. But the prophet did not have understanding that there is something he needs to do to come out of the battle in the first place. Now, the woman reluctantly, she said, I don't understand this. You said we need to pray. My husband told us it's all about prayer. Yes, it's good. But then, Elijah said, this one is not issue of prayer. It is altar versus altar, blood for blood. Are you hearing what I'm saying? This battle came from somewhere, and we need to understand what is invoked in the spirit realm to deal with it. And she went to bring oil. Somebody say oil. Somebody say oil. What is the importance of the oil? What is the significance of the oil? When she brought the oil, the man of God said, go and begin to pour the oil. Now, as she was pouring the oil, that means what she needed for the deliverance has always been there, but their inability to release it. Their inability to release it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Sometimes we are withholding our deliverance. Sometimes we are withholding things in our life. And when she brought the oil... As the, she began to pour the oil on the altar, the altar of poverty began to give way. The altar of prosperity began to rise. Are you hearing what I'm saying? What does it mean? After then, there was divine turn around. All of a sudden. And she came back to the man of God. She said, man of God, I carry out the instruction you gave to me. And look at prosperity everywhere. And the man of God said, hold on, woman. Don't celebrate yet. Before you celebrate, go and cancel. Go and pay. Sell the oil. Pay the debt first. First. One way or the other, one way or the these powers, inherited battles. Some of you, 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 you will have dreams. In your dream, you will, you will always see yourself in your village, in your village, in your village, while you are in the city. You will see yourself in the village while you are in the city. And some of you, any time a major breakthrough is about to happen or something great is about to happen in your life, sometimes you will see dead people in your family, people who have died in your family. You know what it means? It's not actually spirit of death. It is familiar spirit leading that connects you to the ancestral powers of your father's house. So how do you break out of it? Some people say, I've prayed, I've fasted, I've done everything. The man of God didn't ask the woman to pray. He said, this is what you need to do. Amen, somebody. After the woman, after the woman carried out the instruction, that was the end of the battle. Today marks the end of that battle. <laughs> as we pray, just in the next five minutes I'll be done. Then we're going to prayer. Now as we pray, I want you to understand something. The thing we need for deliverance, God has always given to us. God has given to us already. But our inability to release it, to understand... There are people who speak in tongues, but they are very stranded. There are people who speak in tongues, they are broke. You know why? They speak in tongues, but they don't obey the voice of the Spirit. They don't obey the voice of the Spirit. You know, 2 Corinthians 3.16, it said, Now, the Lord God is that Spirit. And where the Spirit of God is, there there is liberty. Now, how can you have the Spirit of God that gives liberty and you are in bondage? Something is wrong. Where the spirit of God is, where the spirit of God is, there, there is what? Liberty. Where the spirit of God is, there there is liberty. Now, if you have the spirit of liberty, why are you going through struggle? It's, the, the thing is simple. If you go to the book of Judges chapter 6, if you read verse 11 and verse 12, Judges chapter 6, Verse 11 and verse 12. The angel came to Gideon. The angel came to Gideon. Judges chapter 6, not chapter 3. Judges chapter 6. The angel came to Gideon. And they told Gideon, 
He said, mighty man of valor, the Lord is with thee. He didn't say amen because it was actually a prophecy. He didn't say amen to the prophecy, rather he reacted. He said, if you say the Lord is with me, why are we suffering like this? Amen, somebody. Somebody told you, oh, you are a great man, you are going to prosper. You didn't say amen, you reacted. You said, I've been in this thing for too long. If the Lord is with me, why are we going through this? He said, there came an angel of the Lord and sat under the oak, which was in Ophrah, that pertained unto Joash, Abizrael, and the son Gideon, treasured with by the winepress to hide from the Midianites. Now verse 12. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. Verse 13. And Gideon said unto him, Oh my Lord, if the, if, oh my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this, all this befalling us? You see, it's a problem. The angel was telling Gideon, you are a great man. And Gideon is a deliver, uh, deliverance minister, but he was not delivered. Amen, somebody. He was not delivered. Okay, let me show you something. We'll come back to this. Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 1. He was a deliverance minister, but he was not delivered. Ezekiel 1 1. He said, now it came to pass in the 30th year, in the fourth month, in the fifth day of the month, of the month, as I was among the captive by the river of Kiba, that the heavens were opened and I saw visions of God. He was, a, he was among the captive, yet he was still seeing vision. You, you, didn't, you didn't see that? Huh? I was among the captive by the river of Keba. <laughs> but he was still seeing vision. <laughs> in the midst of captivity, he was seeing vision. Now my question is, called it Jehovah Shalom. Unto this day it is yet in Ophrah and Abizrael. And it came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto him, Take thy father's young bullock, even the second bullock of seven years old, you see, and God throw was, down. You see, the angel was very specific. He said, Take the seven-year-old bullock of thy father's house. Gideon was very prayerful. He was praying without result, and the Lord said, there is something going on. In the case of altar of your father's house, altars are not things you just destroy by prayer. Covenant are involved. You must understand something between prayer, altar, sacrifice. God answers prayer. But it's not a prayer keeping God. It's a covenant keeping God. And he operates by covenant. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Every covenant speaking against you from your mother's house or your father's house tonight Today, you are coming out of it. Read on, sir. Read on, sir. Read on, sir. 26. Mm -hmm. And build an altar unto the Lord thy God upon the top of this so, rock. Let's start from verse 20, 25. 25. Yeah. And it came to pass uh -huh. the same night that the Lord said unto him. The same night the Lord said unto Gideon. Uh -huh. Take thy father's young bullock, even the second bullock of seven years old. Seven years, God was very specific. Seven years old. Seven years old. Seven years old. Uh -huh. And throw down the altar of Baal that thy father has, and cut down the groove that is by it. And build an altar. What altar did he say should cast down? His own altar? What altar? The father's altar. Which altar is crying against you? Every altar from your father's house, from your mother's house, you will escape in the name of Jesus. Somebody shut fire. Shut fire. Shut fire. Yeah, 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 yeah. Every altar speaking against you, you will escape it in the name of Jesus. So he took the seven-year-old bullock. Seven-year-old. What was going on? The, their problem was tied to a particular pattern and a particular time and season and they had to do this seven year old if he took the six year old bullock nothing will happen 
It takes instruction to eliminate destruction. After then, after Gideon have done this, if you read chapter 7, the local deliverance minister became an international deliverance minister. <laughs> your statue is about to change. I say your status is about to change. He was a local deliverance minister. Local. Very local. Local deliverance. Local deliv nobody knows him. He was powerful, anointed. Nobody knows him. Because the altar will never allow anybody to know him. You are beautiful, but nobody will see you. Because the altar will not allow anybody to see you. You are very brilliant, but nothing will happen because any step you try to take, the power of your father's house will speak. I don't know how long they have been speaking, but I came under the grace of my father. I came to prophesy, to declare upon your life. What stop your father will not stop you. What stop your mother will not stop you. I prophesy, he will be the one to come out of the battle. If your amen is loudest, it will happen for you. Lift up your hands. From my father. 